What's up everyone and welcome to Roby Tech. Today we deal with the question, a burning question, a fiery question, a question from the heavens. I need a gaming PC, but I only have a... <laughs> I need a gaming PC, Roby, and I only have $500. I mean, what else does God have to do? He worries about these things. Now, what is the best gaming PC I can buy with a budget of $500? Well, fear not, because today we part the best $500 gaming PC you can buy in early 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Roby Tech. I must be honest, choosing a gaming PC at the $500 price point is hard. Not because it's not possible, but because you want to ensure you can pull every single ounce of power you can for the money you spend. Also, this is an incredibly important price point because this is where most gaming consoles like the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro sit in regards to price. And I believe this price point also represents where a lot of people are looking for an entry-level gaming PC. Now, a couple of caveats. First, this is not, I repeat, this is not made to look pretty, like me. And any RGB that we get is a bonus, but here we are all optimizing for power, regardless of how it looks. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna look terrible, but I'm just gonna say, this isn't gonna be the RGB rainbow puke of awesome that you're used to on Robitech. The GPU and the CPU were the most critical components here, with the GPU being the most important. So we had to sacrifice across the other parts, including looks, to get the best PC for that $500 price point. Second, prices change, and at the time, this came in at just over $500, but it could be less than $500 or more than $500 on a week-to-week -week basis. Things are kind of crazy right now, and prices are fluctuating. I got this as close to the price point as I could without sacrificing too much. There were only so many things I was willing to sacrifice, and when it got a little bit below to the point where I was uncomfortable, I just didn't feel right recommending it to you. Now finally, when I did this exercise about a month ago for the $1,000 PC build, which if you haven't seen, you should check out right here, I built it on a platform that was expandable and could grow. It was a cornerstone build you could easily build off of and upgrade as a year or two went by, given it was adopting a lot of the latest and greatest tech. However, when you get to a $500 build, a lot of that has to kind of go out the window. Here it's about maximizing the power per dollar across generations of devices. And outside of replacing a GPU or even a CPU to bolster the brawn of this PC, you aren't gonna see PCIe Gen 4 or USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 here. This just means that if there is support for PCIe Gen 4 in the 3000 series Nvidia or RDNA 2 cards from AMD, you aren't going to be able to buy a PC at this price point that gives you that. That's not to say that you can't unlock a lot of potential when upgrading this PC, but it has limits compared to a $1,000 PC, which gives you the ability to adopt the latest architecture from AMD and Nvidia. What you will have though is a great high FPS gaming PC that will run games at 1080p at greater than 100 frames per second with the ability to modify settings to run at 1440p or 4K, but not at max settings. It's no slouch, don't get me wrong, and it will more than scratch that PC gaming itch aplenty. By the way, I will be updating these guides on a three month basis and trying to keep you up to date on what to buy at the $500, $1,000 and $2,000 price point. So be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring that notification bell so you can get a notification each and every time we post a new video and to keep you in the know. Also, we will have links to the parts in the description below. So if you wanna pick up the build, just head on down there, add them to your cart and boom, you're ready to go. Let's talk about the parts. Yeah, baby, parts dance, parts dance. Par I'm just, that's not really in the script. <laughs> so for the CPU, I chose the six core 12 thread Ryzen 5 1600 AF. This is the 12 nanometer refresh of the 14 nanometer Ryzen 5 1600. Performance wise though, this thing does not perform like a Ryzen 5 1600, but is actually in some cases outperforming the Ryzen 5 2600. At the time of recording, this was coming in at $85 over on Amazon and $99 over on Newegg versus the $120 Ryzen 5 2600, which is a steal. Now you might be asking, why not Intel? Frankly, the included cooler and the fact that this price, Intel doesn't have anything comparable that includes a cooler and it's six core and 12 thread just makes this kind of a no brainer. I'm still rooting for Team Blue, but right now it's just hard to recommend them, even for a gaming PC. Now for the motherboard, I chose the ASRock B450M HDV Rev4. 
A lot of videos out there chose the Gigabyte B450M DS3, which is about $10 more and adds a couple of additional USB 2 slots for the rear I.O. Now they both have similar review scores, but I know for a fact the R4 of the ASRock build is compatible with Ryzen 3000 ready and doesn't need a BIOS upgrade to use that chip, which is daunting for some folks when it comes to upgrading a BIOS. Now, I wanted to make sure I got the most GPU and CPU for the money, so I spent the extra money on the GPU instead of two USB 2 slots. So take that USB 2 slots, I want more graphical power, not more old school USB plug-in power if you know what I'm saying. So where did the money I skimped on the other parts go? Well, to the ASUS GeForce GTX 1650 Super Overclocked 4GB Phoenix Fan Edition. Man, that sounds impressive. Unfortunately, the card doesn't look all that impressive, but it's a dang good card. Again, this is a great card for 1080p gaming, and when you look at the benchmarks for this card, you can easily get 100 plus FPS without sacrificing too much from a game visual standpoint within reason at 1080p. Now I'm guessing some of you are thinking, Roby, why not AMD? You love AMD. Well, I love everybody. I love everybody. You're all my friends and I appreciate you. Intel, AMD, man, even you Intel GPU. But at this time of this recording, the RX 590, which is the comparable card from AMD, was more expensive. And typically, secondly, the AMD graphics drivers have been, what's the word I would use? Oh yeah, hot garbage. Now, I know we have some new ones out there, specifically from AMD, that show promise, but I would like to see long-term issues resolved before I go asking you guys to pick up a graphic card from AMD. I wanna know they work, and the last thing I need in the comments below is a bunch of trolls telling me, hey, thanks for that AMD. By the way, it doesn't work with my game. That would make me feel bad. I would cry. A small tear. Just a little one. Okay, maybe big. I actually, I'm, I'm actually pretty sensitive, so let's not do that, please. For RAM, I chose Team T-Force Vulcan Z 16 gigs, a two by eight gig dim configuration of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. Now, some of you might be asking, okay, let's be clear. Probably two of you are asking, but Ryzen 5 1600 AF only supports system memory specifications of 2667 megahertz, Mr. Roby. Well, yes, yes it does. Thank you for noticing the two of you who knew that. I think this is just AMD playing it safe because the 1600 AF does have the improved IMC of the 2600 and people have been able to run RAM speeds up to 3600 megahertz with this CPU. So 3200 megahertz should be no issue and should you upgrade later to a 3000 series Ryzen CPU, which the motherboard supports, then you have the RAM to support it. Bonus score. I don't know, maybe. I'm pretty excited. I think we should all be excited. Look at you guys. Even the whole, yeah, look, there we go. I got Trevor back there going, whoa, whoa. He's got, I got a fist pump from Trezor. Trevor. I got a fist pump of treasure. I got that too. <laughs> yeah. Now for storage, I went with Team Group T-Force Vulcan 2.5 inch, 250 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD. Now why not an M.2 NVMe drive, Robitech? Why not? Why? Well, simply put, all of the NVMe SSDs at this price point would be TLCU, not tender loving care, triple layered cell, almost as cool, but nowhere near as reliable. <clears throat> and this has some issues when it comes to durability and performance, especially as the drive fills up. Now, given we only have 250 gigabytes to work with, I wanted to ensure reliability and at the same time not cause potential issues as the drive fills up or as you read and write frequently, which you are bound to do a ton given it's only 250 gigabytes and you only have one drive. So let's take it easy, show something a little safe, but if you wanted to go with an NVMe, I guess you could just try not to get a TLC and spend that little bit of extra money. Now for power supply, I needed 500 watts or greater. Price was definitely a factor. I was skimping. I mean, I worked really hard to get this as close to $500 as possible. So I went with a Thermaltake Smart Series 500 watt PSU. It's 80 plus certified and it meets the minimum bar. I've used Thermaltake before, never had issues with their PSUs. Reviews were actually okay. It's not modular and it's not gonna win any beauty pageants. Let's be clear, those ketchup and mustard with those like black fiber kind covers, not the prettiest but it does give you the power you need and you get it at 85% efficiency. Now, finally the case, which is an area I'm also and always careful in because sure, you can get a, tw you can get a case for 20 bucks, but your experience in building in it is brutal and sometimes just plain unforgiving. That's why I selected the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L Micro ATX Tower. In fact, most people who recommend builds at this price point have chosen this case. 
and for super easy reasons. This is a nice, small, compact case, supports all the components I selected, and it gives you the room for a full ATX power supply. Given its price point at $49, it's an incredible value. Seriously, I cannot believe this case is this cheap, and especially given the amount of airflow options it supports. Up to a 240 millimeter AIO, if you need to upgrade later, two USB 3 on the front panel, which is uniquely placed on the side, and as a bonus, it has plenty of room for cable management and where you place the parts. Are pretty straightforward, and that's it. You guys, that's the best $500 PC in a nutshell in early 2020. Now, notice a caveat, why early 2020? Guys, parts change all the time. We have new parts coming out and things change. So like I said, we'll continually update and keep you up to date. But if you were gonna buy a $500 PC right now, this is the one to buy. If I could, and I always like to, I wanna tell you the first thing I would upgrade, and that would be a GPU. For just $100 more, I would pick up a 1660 Super. After that, if you had a little bit more, I'd add in a 500 gigabyte or one terabyte NVMe SSD from either Samsung, Seagate, or Western Digital, which greatly, greatly improves your storage options and gives you more room for games. When we start going above that and we start getting into like crazy upgrades, then check out my 1K and 2K guides as we start to approach those final price points. I've showed you the 1K earlier. You can check out the 2K one right here. Now, finally, if you're planning on building this PC, I don't know if you know this, Surprise timing, but we just released a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a PC, which you can also check out right here. Now it goes without saying, you are gonna be able to buy a $500 pre-built with as much power as doing it yourself is, and it's easier than you think, and you get better bang for your buck. So build that PC, follow our guide, heck, follow both of these guides, and I think you'll be quite happy. Well, guess what? That's it for Robitech today. After a couple one hour episodes, people are probably pretty surprised. What do you think, Brian? What? Only, only 15 minutes? What am I gonna do with myself with this episode? Well, let us know what you thought about today's episode in the comments below. Is there a part you disagree with that you would change? Are you gonna build this PC? We would love to know if you could tweet us and tell us all about it. What would be the first thing you would upgrade if you had to upgrade a part in this PC? Let us know about all of that stuff in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video. Also, head on over to mixer.com slash robytech and give us a follow over there for our live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. It is a blast of a time. You should come hang out. We build PCs. We do all sorts of crazy shenanigans, and there are a ton of giveaways galore. By the way, that's Pacific time, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time. Also, be sure to drop us a follow over at Twitter and Instagram, at Robitech, easy, and check us out over at facebook.com slash Robitech. I know your parents hang out with me, and I love them. Now, finally, if you want to hang out with a bunch of like-minded techies, have questions about builds, or want to get some technical help or build suggestions, check the link in the description below for the Robitech Discord. It's a great and active community just waiting for you to be a part of it. Now, thanks for watching. Go buy your $500 PC and go build it, because that's what I'm going to go do right after this. We'll see you guys later. Hashtag beefy course. <laughs> Mine doesn't have any gooeys. <laughs> now while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and make sure you spank that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video. No. Wait, no, come on, Brian. We need to spank it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Was that what you wanted? Yeah.